at the uh, conference, the understanding by the women panel or the panel that was focused in that axis on the issue of women and revolution, and in particular with the ideas of Ida Apo and Abdullah Ochalan. And earlier in the interview, I shared my what I remembered from reading from Abdullah Ochalan or Ida Ochalan's uh, quotation where he said that a society can never be free without women's liberation. So we understand uh, from his readings and, 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 and words and ideas that he shared with us in his defense when he had the opportunity to engage with his legal representatives. He used that opportunity to share the Kurdish struggle, to share his ideas and philosophy, not for his personal liberation, but the liberation of his people. And that to us shows us his selflessness, how much he sacrifices for his people because he believes in the just cause. And he believes in what he said, when we must smash patriarchy, when we must uh, empower, elevate substantively and in real terms, the freedom of women. So at the conference, the panelists comprised of academics, activists and scholars who focused on the ideas of the revolution in Rojava and how it has inspired our context, the grassroots communities, as well as other women. Because remember, when you look at a country and it tells you we have so many women in government, so many women represented in persons, so many represented in different organizations. One of the panelists pointed out very clearly that those are statistics we are speaking to, but the statistics don't mean that the women that are there are empowered or that the society is practicing equality with regards to men and women, because some of those women could be in those positions, but they are not educated. They don't understand what is happening in patriarchal structures, in business, in government, in organization, in society. And sometimes they can also support patriarchy. So when we look at the actual examples in Russia, the co-leadership structures, your canton structures, the decentralization of central state power. In other words, localizing power in communities, neighborhoods, districts, regions, or cantons. Then you can see the devolution of power in your co-leadership is not symbolic. It's not just there to say we have men and women in charge and it ends there. But the women have real power. They have actual agency to empower as well as to bring about change for equality, not only in word and in rules, but in real terms. So the society that is developing in Rojava is an inspiration to us post our liberation because we have a lot of challenges and problems currently. There's issues of violence against women. There's issues of women not being empowered, although they're in positions of leadership, they're not taken seriously. You see it not only in South Africa and Africa, you see it in America, you see it in Europe, you see it in South America, Western Asia. And we know most societies, if you take out the religious extremism, there is still patriarchy because of culture and history and tradition and custom. So one of the things we learn from Abdullah Ochalan's insight into the development of patriarchal and capitalist society since the time of the Mesopotamian periods, as he explained in his political writings. But when we look at his writings that speaks about the history and oppression of the Kurdish people, there's a phrase used in genealogy which says, killing of the man, that must take place. And what we mean by that is not literally taking out males, but killing patriarchy as a system that's entrenched in society. So the conference attendees spoke to many aspects of liberation, freedom, and struggle, and the inspiration they draw because Rojava is the actual practical application of the third way or the ideas of Ochanan that is making a real change in society. Mm -hmm.